In this Lies of P beginner guide, we'll be sharing with you our best tips and tricks to start your journey against the crazed puppets of Krat. Be assured that anything that you may miss out on will be included in this guide, so watch on to find out. At the start of the game, you'll be asked to choose between three different classes called combat styles, and this will determine your initial default abilities and stats. Don't feel threatened by this choice, as this is not the end all of your build. However, keep in mind you will not be able to respec your default class stats. The three selections you get are the Path of the Cricket, Balanced, Path of the Bastard, Dexterity, and Path of the Sweeper, Strength. If you want to wield regular swords and some relatively large weapons, the Balanced Path is the way for you. If you're looking to use daggers, spears, or fancy rapiers, then you want to go for the Dexterity Path. Lastly, if you prefer to attack with massive weapons such as cleavers, hacksaws, or hammers, the Strength Path will be your best choice. If you're new to Souls-like games, I would just recommend going for the Balanced Path and using regular swords to learn the game. Once you feel comfortable, you can experiment in the practice area of the game to find what really suits you best. Let's begin this section by highlighting that there is a respec system and it can be found about halfway through the game. Respecing allows you to reallocate levels, P organs, and legion arms, so don't feel too pressured about these early game decisions. However, be mindful that respec does not allow you to change your original class stats. Your default abilities can be leveled up by spending ergo that you gain from killing enemies or picking up fragments of it on the ground. As you level up, the cost of ergo will exponentially increase and make leveling feel slow, so the first 50 levels will be important. For point allocation, my recommendation would be to invest into vitality for the first 5-10 to 10 levels, as that extra HP makes the game much more forgiving of your mistakes. I then spent my next 5 or so levels focused on the stat which increases my weapon damage the most, which will either be motivity or technique, depending on what type of weapon you want to use. If you're running the balanced build, then I would recommend leveling these two simultaneously. For the next 10 levels, I pumped Vigor a lot to get extra stamina, which is incredibly helpful against bosses and large groups of enemies. At this point, I started to get a lot of capacity, which increases the amount of weight P can hold. I leveled this in order to start equipping high-level puppet parts that would reduce damage taken drastically while keeping P under 80% equip load in the weight stat. This is important because his normal roll becomes much slower when you pass the 80% threshold, so if you want to equip those heavy puppet parts to be tanky, make sure you invest in capacity. After level 30, I suggest you try to meet these goals in whatever order you please. Vitality 30, Vigor 20, Capacity 20, Motivity or Technique 30, and Advance minimum points possible. If you're using a balanced build, 20 and 20 for Motivity and Technique. Note that if you feel as if you don't need the extra tankiness from puppet parts, you won't need to level capacity much. At this point, you may be wondering about the Advanced Default ability. This stat is very rarely used and is only effective on some specific weapons and Legion arms. I recommend avoiding this entirely unless you have a specific weapon in mind that uses it. And another important thing when leveling up is to not be tempted to use boss ergo. If you read the description of any rare ergo you get from defeating bosses, it mentions that a treasure hunter may want this rare ergo. This treasure hunter will exchange powerful items in exchange for your rare ergo, but you won't meet him for some time, so until then, hang on to them and don't use them for leveling up. It will be worth it. A small but important tip going forward is understanding what the discharge status means. When you use up all of your pulse cells, the game's healing flask, you enter the discharged state which allows you to generate one pulse cell by damaging enemies. When you do enough damage, you'll regenerate the pulse cell and can use it normally. You'll enter the discharge state again after using it. So whenever you use up all your pulse cells against a boss, it may be better to start getting more offensive than defensive so that you can regenerate that pulse cell and keep healing. There are also upgrades you can make to your P organs which will make you stronger in the discharged state. As with leveling, don't feel too pressured by the choices of your P organ upgrades as you'll be able to respect these later. You'll be able to upgrade P using quartz that you find throughout the game. You can acquire quartz from not just bosses but chests and mini bosses as well, so keep on the lookout for those. In the P organ menu, you'll see large nodes and small nodes next to them. The large nodes all have an upgrade effect that can only be activated by filling all the small nodes next to it using quartz. In those small nodes, you can select a small upgrade for P. There are five different types of small upgrades, attack, survival, ability, and item types. You may only select one type per large node. For example, you can only have one attack upgrade in a large node, and then you need to choose from the three other types to fill in the other small nodes. Now, what P organ upgrades are good? To start, I suggest going for as many pull cell upgrades as possible. So the large node increase pull cells and the survival upgrade increase pull cells. Any pull cell upgrade you find will be useful as they are a core element of your gameplay. 
Large nodes that will be very helpful are Link Dodge, Add Amulet Slot, Add Fable Slots, and Retain Guard Regain. You'll get large node upgrades later on for other combat systems, but I recommend just going for upgrades on things that you find yourself using often. For the small node upgrades, you want any Pulse Cell, Guard Regain, and Fable Art nodes. Besides those upgrades, anything stagger related should be good, especially on heavy weapons that inflict lots of stagger damage. Paired with that, Fatal Attack Damage will give you good damage from staggering. Any stamina reducing upgrade is great too for your dashes, dodges, and attacks. As with most Souls Likes, you can upgrade your weapon using Moonstones that you can find from enemies on the ground in shops or in quest lines. Using Moonstones and Ergo will allow you to upgrade the blade of any weapon you find, except special weapons which require Moonstones of the Covenant. Moonstones of the Covenant are limited in the world, but every normal Moonstone besides full Moonstones will be infinitely purchasable, so you don't need to worry about spending them to upgrade the weapons you are currently using. You will also gain cranks in the game, which can change the scaling of handles so it can better suit your build. There are four types, Motivity, Technique, Advance, and Balance. These are limited, so don't use these on just any weapon. They allow great flexibility in builds by making some scaling skew from Technique supported to Motivity supported. When making your own weapon, it's really easy to get lost and sink a couple of hours into messing with all the possible combinations. The best way to make a weapon you will like is by trying out all of the initial weapons, finding which blade you like the most, and then finding which handle has your favorite attack pattern. When I made my weapon, I wanted something with range while still keeping good attack speed. I started by finding my favorite blade, the Bone Cutting Saw Blade, which had great physical damage and huge range, and then tried to find the handle. Handles that came from heavy weapons usually had very slow attack patterns, so instead I went with a balanced sword handle, the Bramble Curve Sword Handle, which gave me good attack speed as well as a very powerful Fable Art. When you make your own weapon, try to start by finding a weapon you really like, and then experiment by using the handle of that weapon with different blades, or the blade of that weapon with a different handle. It's a fun process that allows you to make your weapon work well for your playstyle. Spectres are AI allies that join you in combat. When you get your Wish Stone, you'll be able to empower your Spectre. In my experience, the Spectre is best used as a distraction rather than a source of damage, so I like to use the Friendship Wish Stone and the Indomitable Wish Stone to keep it alive longer. To summon a Spectre, you'll need a consumable called Star Fragment. This item is easily purchased later on and is a common drop from enemies, so don't worry if you use them all up. If you find yourself struggling on a boss a lot, even with a Spectre, and you don't have a lot of this material, then I suggest farming some Ergo and leveling up before you use it all, so that you don't have to do a boss solo if you don't want. When you play Lies of P, you may worry that your consumables may be valuable or have other purposes for later. Fortunately, Legion magazines and Fable Catalysts are very common in the game, as well as Attribute Purification Ampules, Attribute Resistance Ampules, and Sawtooth Wheels. All other consumables that you get have at most 20 copies, with some only appearing 4 times such as Cat Dust. As such, I suggest using the rarer consumables against many bosses and bosses. There are four attribute status ailments in the game and three special status ailments. The ailments that might catch you off guard are Decay, Break, and Disruption. Decay will slowly reduce your weapon durability, so don't be in the middle of a fight while afflicted with this. Break will heavily reduce the HP you regain from using pulse cells, so make sure you wait it out before healing. Lastly, Disruption will instantly kill you if the bar fills, so be very careful with how much disruption damage you take. Break and disruption can be cured with a special purification ampule, consumable, and mitigated with special resistance ampule. Decay can be cured with the attribute purification ampule and mitigated with the attribute resistance ampule. All of these can be found in the world as treasure or purchased from Plandina and Hotel Krat. Exploration is an important part of Lies of P, and checking around nooks and corners can yield valuable quartz, weapons, and questline objectives. It's worth looking around carefully and paying attention to the text items you pick up to get context on what is going on. Additionally, you should make sure to talk to NPCs often. They have new dialogue frequently, usually after you complete an area, and may give you important exposition or items. Always thoroughly explore areas to find NPCs that appear outside of Hotel Krat in order for them to provide you their services. And that wraps up our Lies of P Beginner Tips and Tricks Guide. There's a lot more to the game than what I mentioned here, and you can find a lot more in-depth information by visiting our Lies of P wiki. Again, if you have your own tips to share, please leave them in the comments, and if you have further questions, please leave them there as well, and we will answer them as soon as we can. 